Chatham County, North Carolina doesn't have too many well-known residents, but we do have a few writers and some artists that have been written up in Smithsonian Magazine, are mentioned in a few art books, and have their work at some museums around the state. One such artist is Clyde Jones. Clyde is what they call a folk or outsider artist. Many years ago, when he was rehabilitating from a logging accident, oddly enough, he started fooling around with a chainsaw and some fallen down trees and made himself an animal sculpture. He's been making them nonstop ever since. People call them Clyde Critters. It's hard to miss his home in Bynum, an old mill town on the banks of the Hall River. The little hamlet is like something out of a Dr. Seuss book. Clyde's Critters are in everyone's yard, lining the streets, and greeting visitors and gawkers who turn off Highway 15501 to navigate the few blocks that make up Bynum. Ask most people about Clyde Jones and they'll tell you a story or two. Like the time the folks from an art museum came to pick up some critters for an exhibition. They had trouble figuring out how they were going to fit one of Clyde's giraffes into their van. Clyde quickly remedied that situation by getting out his chainsaw and cutting the neck square off. That's Clyde for you. He has an uncomplicated way of dealing with things. The story most people love to tell, though, is the day one of the world's most well-known residents came to Bynum to visit its most well-known resident. Russian ballet dancer slash actor Mikhail Baryshnikov passed through here a little over a decade ago. And well, it was a pretty big deal, as you can imagine. So here's how that story goes. How did Baryshnikov find out about Clyde? You know, now I am not sure about that. Um, you might have to ask someone else that, because okay. I'm really not sure. What I have heard is that Mikhail Baryshnikov came to uh, North Carolina. I guess he was performing somewhere up in Durham, maybe during that uh, dance festival they have there. When Michelle Baryshnikov was in town a few years ago, he was staying up at, I think, the Washington Duke Inn in Durham. He was playing um, in the Kafka play, the Cockroach play, Metamorphosis. And someone must have told him, you need to go see Clyde Jones. So Something was connected with the state, why he was here. Okay. I think maybe he'd even come specially to see Clyde's critters. That He saw a Clyde critter and he uh, asked about it and somebody told him that Clyde made it. And so they took him to Bynum. But somebody brought him to Clyde's. It wasn't just accidental that Baryshnikov showed up at Clyde's. I think he drove. This entourage arrived in front of Clyde Jones' house in Bynum. And they get out, and Baryshnikov falls in love with the Clyde critters. Baryshnikov came by in his limousine through Bynum and stopped at Clyde's house and knocked on his door and asked if he could buy a critter. Baryshnikov came up and introduced himself and uh, offered to buy a critter. Baryshnikov came to the house and loved all of his work. And at some point he asked for a critter and Clyde just said no. So he goes and, and he picks out a critter and he goes to Clyde and he says, I want this and Clyde says, no, I, I, I can't sell it to you. He said, but I, I really would like it. And he said, I'm sorry, I, I just can't sell it to you. So that everybody around here knows that Clyde doesn't sell his work. He gives it away to friends, or it's available only through raffles and auctions and things like that. Clyde said that he never sold critters to anyone, no matter what. And I think maybe Baryshnikov really pushed him, and Clyde perhaps got offended. So I heard that when Mikkel was in Bynum, he was actually in Clyde's yard riding the critters, like, you know, sitting on one of the big reindeer, hanging onto the antlers or something like that. I think that's what offended Clyde. I guess he offered him, a, you know, a good amount of money, and Clyde said, uh, you don't need one. I don't sell them, and you can't have one. That story seems to be another legend with Clyde. Money in a box that's offered for and then not received. <laughs> you know, pulls out a thick wad of money and uh, Clyde is not moved. <laughs> it wouldn't have mattered. I know, he still would have gone by with your money. Doesn't sell to anyone ever. So Brezhnikov left and, and told a friend and, and he came, the friend came to Clyde and he said, Clyde? Don't you know who this man is? He's famous. And Clyde says, well, he said, I didn't know him, but he knew me. And later on, somebody asked him, well, why didn't you give this famous ballet dancer a critter? And Clyde said, it didn't seem like he needed one. He never sold it for him. Poor Mikhail walked away disappointed. 
you know, Baryshnikov gets back in the car and leaves, and he never gets the Clyde critter. That's the end of the story. Never got his critter. But then this, somehow this art, this story got in the news, and it actually went out of the API wire. So it went everywhere. People were sending him clippings of this Baryshnikov story from Maine and Oregon, and it went everywhere. And so then I think Clyde sort of felt something. Then Brezhnikov came back and said that he wanted to buy this for his son. Well, as soon as Clyde knew it was for his son, he said, why didn't you tell me? And he sold it to him. Brezhnikov ended up leaving and subsequently wrote Clyde a letter and uh, Clyde softened on him finally and boxed up a critter and sent it off to wherever Brezhnikov was at that point. The letter basically thanks him for showing off the garden and showing off the critters. And I think there's a like a please if it could ever happen on the bottom. I have, you know, have to go by and read it because it is really still hanging there, the letter. And now he has a picture of Brishnikov, I believe, taped on his front door with a lot of other pictures. <laughs> and I guess he really did show his enthusiasm for liking it. I don't know that. That's any more famous to Clyde than any of the other million people that have enjoyed it, you know? He, he doesn't tend to care too much about what you look like, what you do. I just thought it was great when, you know, the man said, you know, Clyde, he's famous. He said, well, I didn't know him, but he knew me. I just thought that was precious. And then I heard that later, he actually danced on stage with his chainsaw. <laughs> But I don't have any idea who that was with, but I know he was part of a dance performance with the chainsaw, and I didn't see it. You'll have to ask Clyde about that. Yeah. He done hit part, and I done mine. How did he ever visit it again? Not yet, but I saw him before. He's still living. Yeah, he is still alive. Yes, yeah, he is. He ain't dead. <laughs> He's not dead.